Hello everyone, good afternoon. Here we are again in another episode of Doctors Go Live on the Columbia Asia Facebook page. Okay, today we'll be talking about pregnancy after 40. It is actually quite a common occurrence, um, but there are a few things that we need to know about this. Uh, what are the risks and um, what are the effects of pregnancy when you are at a mature age? So today we will have with us the consultant obstetrician and gynecologist from Columbia Asia Hospital Bintulu. Ling Ung Ding. Sorry, sorry, Dr. Abi Ling Ung Ding. How are you, Hi. Dr. Abi? I am Hi. good, thank you. Thank you so much for making time to be with us today to discuss this topic. All right, it's my pleasure. That's very nice. Okay, Dr. Abi, um, uh, to start off, maybe you can um, let us know when you're talking about advanced maternal age, how, what is the age range that we are talking about? Actually, I, I purposely choose this topic is because I can see that nowadays in our populations, women are actually, uh, you know, more dominant nowadays and they, you know, they choose the carrier over the pregnancy first. And uh, to be honest with you, then th there'll be more uh, women actually choose to have baby uh, after they have secured the carrier. So when you ask me about actually what is advanced maternal age, there is not a proper... There's no proper definition to define what mm -hmm. is advanced maternal age because based on our population now, uh, yeah. we we are actually becoming older and yet healthier compared to the population 20 years ago. So um, to make things easier, basically when you go and search um, or you go to look for the literature for advanced maternal age, anyone yeah. who is above 35 years old, is already considered as advanced maternal age. But does it really mean it is advanced? Not really, isn't it? So, uh, however, uh, there is, because there is more and more women that is getting pregnant after 40 years of age. So, yeah. uh, after 40 years or 45 years of age, these women are considered as very advanced maternal age. Okay? So, I would say that if you really want me to have a definition, and then... Anybody more than 35 years of age is called already considered as advanced maternal age. Yeah, yeah that's not too flattering like, because 35 and above, 40 and above, some people exactly. still feel like so happening. You, you, you see, want to be um, described as being in an advanced age. But okay, we're talking exactly. about that. Yeah? Exactly. So it is very difficult for us to put a figure on it. Uh, yeah. Because you, you will feel offended when you are 35 years old and then you have your first child and then you are already considered as an advanced maternal age. But because okay. of the context of we try to, you know, uh, tell people what are the complications associated with the pregnancy when your yes. age is above 35. So yeah. that's why we classify anybody more than 35 advanced maternal age. But if you really go and look for a definition for advanced maternal age, I don't think you can really get it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. uh, when we're talking about uh, fertility, is that something yes. that is consistent throughout uh, a woman's age? No. When you are talking about fertility, and we all know that woman, woman or girls is born with a certain amount of her eggs. So yes. throughout the, her whole life, her eggs is being discarded during each of the period cycle. Period. So, yeah. That is why there's a lot of problem associated when a woman is conceived at a later stage of uh, later age. Yeah. Okay. So this is where the the term about the biological clock is ticking. When people say that, exactly. You no. Know, exactly. Like, it's like an hourglass. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> if you want so to say you that. Wanna, yeah. You know, you know, think about pregnancy when your time runs out, which is when the eggs run out. Like, understand, understand. Okay, yes. all right. So um, I understand that especially after the mid-30s, uh, women who conceive are at greater risk of pregnancy-related complications. So you will yes. uh, explain to us what these complications are all about? Okay, so I will uh, I will just go through some of the some of the very common, uh, very uh, basic uh, things uh, when a yes. woman that is trying to conceive at the later yeah. stage of age. So, uh, yeah. and we all know that once we are um, getting older in our age, for us, for the lady who is age, uh, advanced age, who try to conceive normally, it's a bit more difficult, isn't it? But with the help of modern technology, 
more and more women is getting uh, conceived, is getting pregnant because of the technology. So because of all this technology, there's increased risk that is occurring during the pregnancy, for example, multiple pregnancy and yes. pregnancy yes. induced hypertension, uh, bleeding during early stage of the pregnancy and also the season section for this pregnancy and also yes. poor um, outcome with the baby and a baby with a low APGAR score. APGAR score is a scoring for the baby when the baby was born. It's just to tell you whether the baby is good or bad. So with all this technology, this is actually increased the risk for this pregnancy, especially multiple pregnancy and also pregnancy induced hypertension. Yeah. Okay. Are you referring to uh, fertility procedures? Exactly. So uh, for a woman that is age uh, more than 40 years old, for you to conceive normally, actually the percentage is only about 20 to 40 percent. So with the help of uh, fertility, the percentage yeah. of conceiving is actually increased to 60 to 70. So with the help of the modern technology, it also comes with the CPLA. Okay. In your experience, uh, Dr. you can share with us. Uh, mm. In your experience, what what is the what is the oldest age that you have seen in um, a woman who is pregnant? If a okay. patient has come to you, the, the oldest one. So from my own personal experience, mm. when I was working in UK, I have a mother first conceive her first baby after seven IVF attempt at the age of fifty six years old. My goodness, 56. Yes. 56 wow. years old, her first baby, but after seven uh, infertility treatment. And she delivered safely? She delivered safely via season section, yes. Well, any complications? No, it's, uh, wow. it's, it's very good. Actually, the baby was beautiful. My goodness. Yes, that's wow. my personal yeah. experience. Yeah, to be yeah. honest with you, um, for the last uh, 10 years, after uh, there is a statistic for, for population in UK, a mm. mother who conceived yeah. more than 45 years old in the year of 2008 is about 1,600 throughout the whole UK. Yes. But in the okay. year of 2018, this amount actually almost doubled to 2,400. So out of this amount of a uh, mother who conceived after the age of 45, actually 53% yes. of them is first baby. They are not having the third or fourth baby, but they're actually having their first baby after the age of 45 with the help of technology. Yeah, yeah, of course. Is it the same uh, in, in Malaysia? Are we looking at um, pregnancy at the later stage these days compared to, you know, say 20, 30 years ago? I, I would think so because I think you can see more and more women nowadays are actually very good in their field of career. So mm -hmm. I think... Uh, person, personal, personal experience wise, yes, I do see more and more ma mother become pregnant after the age of 40. But maybe yeah. in Malaysia, uh, mother is mostly multi after the age of 40 compared to, you know, maybe advanced country like UK. They are, yeah. they secure their work first, then they get pregnant at, after the age of 40s. Mm -hmm. So in, in Malaysia, we still do see a lot of mother having their babies after the age of 40s. Yeah, I see. Okay. Um, another thing also, like when you meet your your patients, right, and they are at an mm. advanced age, usually the reason for that, apart from uh them choosing career over family first, and then um, what are the other is could it be also accidental? Oh, <clears throat> mm, yeah. I think after the age of forty five, mostly are accidental because of yeah. uh, poor family planning. But I wouldn't say that after 40, some of them are still quite keen, you know. Like uh, in uh, Bintulu, I have seen a mother who is 46 years old having her sixth baby. So oh it's God. it's quite common, yeah. Yeah, because I think some some women, they feel that, okay, like after a certain age, there's no possibility of them getting pregnant. So there's no... Um, exactly. They don't manage, you know, uh, uh, family planning and all that. And then suddenly, out of the blue, they realise that they're exactly. pregnant. Exactly, yeah. <clears throat> All right. Uh, doctor, let's talk about the risk now. Uh, you mentioned earlier about um, multiple gestation, pregnancy, mm. hypertension, and all mm. this. Uh, what, what kind of 
danger are we looking at? This is every pregnancy the same? Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. To so do with when, yeah. So when we talk about uh, pregnancy after the age of uh, you know maybe forties, let's say, yeah. so more conceive naturally after 40 years so the outcome is definitely better than the woman who conceived mm. their you know assisted reproductive technique like IVF yeah. mm. in the process of IVF is a very lengthy process the mother has to go through induction of ovulation yeah and then yeah. uh you know harvesting of the ovum and right. then either you do an ICSI or you doing a IVF you know in vitro test tube baby and then re-implantation yeah. of the baby. This whole process is actually very uh, nerve-wracking because the mother, yeah. in the process of doing it, the mother is worried and stressed because she yeah. might be worried that anything that she has done, anything that she ate, anything that you know she could think of can actually endanger this process, which is very yeah. true. Yeah. So for example, for IVF, in the process mm. of inducing the ovulation, the mother mm. needs to take a medication and also multiple injections to produce the egg. Mm. And then the egg will be, you know, grow and then to be harvested. So if the eggs or the ovaries being hyper, you know, mm. very much stimulated, it will lead to a condition called ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, which in a very extreme uh, uh, case can bring yeah. death to the mother. Oh, okay. Yes. So I would say that the mother is going through a lot of uh, physical and emotional stress, stress, yeah. you know, during the process of getting pregnant yeah. with um, technology. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, we're talking about the dangers, right, uh, of pregnancy. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, uh, there's always a risk. So uh, what is the difference between um, the risk that is experienced by someone who's younger and then someone who is at an uh, at advanced age. I know that there are some that are listed here, but maybe we can go through it very quickly one by one. Like what is mm -hmm. multiple uh, gestation, okay. antipartum okay. hemorrhage and all this? Okay, multiple gestations, like I said, because uh, you are being stimulated, your mm -hmm. ovary has been stimulated, so that means your ovary do not play by rules. When they're ovulated, they don't play by rules. So at the at one time, it can mm. ovulate more than one, more than two, or more than three. So okay, if this is not you, this is not something that they can control, lah. I mean, the the medical professionals, it's not something that they can. They can't because the moment they give you the injection, their yeah. aim is to stimulate your ovary to produce uh, to produce mm. egg. So okay. whether to produce one or two is not is not controlled by the medication. Okay, you see. Okay. So the okay. those of the medication has to be titrated so that do not experience hyperstimulation, but at yeah. the same time you are being stimulated so okay. this is a very you know fine uh thin line in between getting more or getting not stimulated at all okay. so during this process this is yeah. the process this is the time when you're hyper stimulated and there's the chance mm -hmm. the chance of getting multiple baby is higher yeah. so okay. so this that's is like a bonus uh, from no child to a few children yes. Too and much child, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, what about pregnancy-induced hypertension? I think we spoke about this just now. Yes, Hi yeah. uh, pregnancy-induced hypertensions. It can be divided into two factors. Number one is the mother's factor, and number two is the placenta factor. So, women of the older age, they already um experience a lot of changes in their life, isn't it? So, hypertension is the disease that is more common in the older population. Yes, yeah, that's right. So a mother who is already in the older populations, when they get pregnant on top of the placenta, plus the mother's herself uh, condition, which is hypertension. Yeah. Yeah. So this can worsen what we call uh, pregnancy-induced hypertension because it's both of the pregnancy and also of the mother herself. Okay. What about yeah. antipartum hemorrhage? Okay. Antipartum hemorrhage is bleeding before pregnancy, uh, before delivery. So oh, usually, when the mother, the mother of an older age, the vessel is more yeah. fragile. Yeah. Okay, the vessel is more fragile. The wall of the uh, blood vessel is more fragile, mm -hmm. and that means also when the placenta is trying to burrow into the wall of the uh, uterus. Yeah. 
the, the link is very weak. The link between the placenta and also the wall of the uterus is very weak. So anytime, any stress or any injury, it can cause these, these uh, vessels together with the uterus leak or damage. So that's why the chances of the bleeding before delivery is higher in the older women. That's why it's higher risk of antipartum hemorrhage. Okay. And it means before. There's also uh, yeah. uh, cesarean yeah. delivery is quite common when you are um, advanced yeah. age. Uh, yeah, that is because um you 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 don't anticipate a woman that is in the older age to have ten babies. So mm -hmm. cesarean is considered a rather safer mode for this kind of woman if they don't des desire more children. Mm. Because labor itself is a very stressful process for the baby. So to yeah. prevent stress, so we will give an option to an older mother, say, look, um, if you want to have so-called relatively safer delivery, it's via cesarean section. Of course, this will, this will mean that this baby do not go through the normal labor mechanism. So there are pros and cons. So this baby that going through the cesarean section, their lungs, their lungs function is worse than the baby who oh, goes through oh. the normal uh, oh, labor mechanism. Yes, yes. Mm, you see, okay. But that, so there, that there is a choice also. Uh, it, if the yes. uh, there's also an option for the mother if she wants to deliver uh, the natural way, that can also yes, be done. There is. Push. There is. So usually, cesarean section is because of the you know maybe um, uh, after the discussion to get to with the mother and the obstetrician. So look, if you prefer a safer way, a relat yeah. relatively safer way is going through cesarean section. Okay, okay, all right. And uh, adverse perina perinatal outcome is also one of the risks uh, in yeah. advanced pregnancy. What, what's so, that? Exactly? Adverse perinatal outcomes basically is because the mother, the quality of the egg, the quality mm -hmm. of an egg of a woman who is at the, uh, at the advanced age. So uh, despite all the, all the technology that we try to rule out the syndrome, you know, yeah. chromosomal or structural anomalies, the baby yeah. that is produced via an older eggs are more mm. prone to have structural anomalies. Structural what anomalies, some of the structure, that means the baby structure was not formed properly. For, for example, mm. the heart is not formed to the 100%. Oh, I see. Some that of these mean. structures is not able to uh, detect it through an antenatal scan. And some mm. of the baby actually chromosomal wise is normal, completely normal, but mm. they cannot look for all the all the micro deletions of all these uh, all these chromosomes because for us to get 100 percent good um genetic pool all the yeah. 23 yeah. pairs of our chromosome had to be perfectly well so yeah. any of the chromosome yeah. with the slight slight defeat defect mm -hmm. we can't mm -hmm. detect it through blood and perhaps this small defect actually could can manifest as a structure mini for example maybe the ear has got a uh, different shape just because mm. one of the chromosome is not right. And this can't be picked up via scan all the time. You yeah. see? Yeah. And then the okay. hearing, the hearing impairment that you know you can't pick up from the ultrasound machine. Only when the baby is born, then you realize that oh, the baby's hearing has got problem because this is the effect of the egg that it's old, and this old egg has been used to produce a baby. How about uh, Down syndrome? Is it also a, a risk when uh, yes. Uh, when, yeah, uh, Down syndrome, like all this, we call it syndromic babies. You can have yeah. Down syndrome, you can, you can have Patau syndrome, you can have Edward syndrome. All these syndromic babies are produced when the egg itself is not good. So that means when the egg trying to divide, they do not divide properly because this egg is old. This egg is old and they do not divide properly. So Down syndrome is a trisomy 21, meaning that this chromosome number 21 is supposed to have two pairs, but it has got extra leg because during the separation, it did not separate properly because this egg itself is old. So it does not function properly. So older mother's egg, of course, you will have a higher chance of uh, having a syndromic baby. But if you are going through uh, assisted reproductive technique, mm. before this egg has been harvested for a baby to, to become a baby, all the baby, all the eggs will be uh, you know, filtered through to get the yeah. best egg yeah. and then to, to fertilize with the sperm and the best fetus 
will be selected. And this fetus that has been selected will be going through the chromosome screening. So like, let's say you have a 10 eggs and 10 eggs has uh, been fertilized to become 10 embryos and all the 10 embryos will be going through chromosomal screening and out of the 10, only the best with no problem with the chromosome will be selected. So maybe out of 10, you only have two embryos that is safe. I see. Yeah. Wow. Technology has <laughs> come a long way. Okay. Um, yeah. Abgasto? Ab Abgasto? Abgasto. Yeah. Abgasto. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what, what exactly is this? Uh, you were saying that it determines the baby's health? Yeah, Abgasco is just a scoring. It's just a scoring to tell me uh, how the baby's muscle movement, how's the baby's oh, spine, how's the baby okay. heart rate, and how's the baby color when the baby was born. It's okay. just a study that has been taken. And whether this is true or not, um, I personally have not really gone into the detail of the study. Mm. It's just yeah. said that the mother of advanced age, the baby yeah. usually associated with poor, poorer aga, meaning that when the baby is born, it becomes less active. You know, the cry is not as loud. The color is not as red. And yeah, the baby's yeah. movement is not as strong. So whether the APCA score is excellent or just fine, it doesn't matter. But yeah. the baby needs to be uh, monitored properly because other than just APCA, like babies, babies are breathing, baby's heart, yeah. it's more important to, to look for uh, problems when the baby is born to a mother with advanced maternal age, yeah. Okay, so what we spoke of um, about all the multiple, ge multiple gestation, mm -hmm. uh, hypertension, hemorrhage and all this. Okay, these are the risk factors for someone who is uh, pregnant after 40, yeah? Okay, mm -hmm. but then again, of course, it's not something that is that is written in stone like these are just, that's why they've got risk. So there are yes. risks that it might happen and there's also a chance that it may not happen, correct? Right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. All right, let's talk about, uh, no, because everything sounds quite, <laughs> quite, quite nerve-wracking just now. Okay, <laughs> you saw, <laughs> maybe because I'm at that age as well, but I'm not that I'm, I'm thinking about pregnancy. <laughs> okay, use of the you... reproductive technique. Okay, what was this mm. all about? That's why for a woman that is more than, you know, 40s to try to conceive for the first time. If you want to go through natural conception, perhaps this is a bit more difficult and it's very stressful for the mother because you are catching up with the age. And for mother that is more age more than 40 or 45 in a very advanced maternal age, normally we straight away offer assisted reproductive technique, which is IVF. Okay. Yes. Like I mentioned earlier, with this technique, it comes with its own complication. Number one is increase the risk of ovarian hyperstimulation, which I mentioned just now. Yes. I think I have a picture for the ovary that is hyperstimulated. So maybe everybody can see the okay. photo. Okay, let's take a look at the picture of the ovaries. There okay. We go. So, okay, yeah, there's a picture of the normal ovary, which is left. And there's one picture that is uh, of the ovary that is hyperstimulated on the right. So in the left, you can see that the 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 follicles are very yeah. um, round, and it has got a very nice surrounding of this egg. So these are the this is the normal ovary which is made waiting to uh, ovulate. So that manuku masa of the manatas. So so this egg has got a very nice wall, very nice shape. This is normal ovary. And when we are having our, uh, when when a woman having their period in a month, when you are having ovulation, one of these eggs, which is mature enough, good enough, and this is the one that is being chosen to ovulate to release. Mm. Comparative, comparatively, on the one, uh, the ovary on the right side is an ovary that is being hyperstimulated, meaning that being stimulated too much. Then you can see there's a lot of uh, empty spaces in it. And it's yeah. very yeah. irregular in shape. Some of them yeah. is maybe a uh, triangular shape, and the wall of it is very thin, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So yes. the wall of it is very thin, meaning that this ovary has been hyperstimulated, but it do not serve function as a mature mature ovum to ovulate. So you stimulate it, but it's not going to ovulate because it's not normal. You can see mm. the difference. The wall is very yes. thin, and it doesn't yeah. have a nice yeah. shape. So this is one of the very common uh, complications that arise from uh, medication that used to 
stimulate the ovum to in uh, the ovary to in uh, ovulate. So if you have too much of the medication, it will end up in right ovary. If you have just nice medication or dosage, you will end up in the left ovary. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. So from uh, from this picture, the one that was on the right just now, in the the one with a lot of uh, ovaries. Um, a lot. This is yeah. When, yeah. Uh, we're looking at all, all of these are ovaries. Eh, no, no, sorry, eggs, right? Eggs yes, yes. But okay. this egg is not a proper egg. It's just yeah, a, yeah. It's just a, a lot of spaces inside. So the ovary actually responded to the treatment, but it's not um making a proper one. Okay. If, so how if you understand? Also, yeah. Yeah. But uh, how is the uh? the egg chosen in order for it to go through the fertility process is this what you meant just now when you say we just weep like? yes <laughs> when, so if you, you if all, all them if, and then choose one yeah, if, if all this right like i said right all this that you see on the right mm. doesn't mean that they have that there is ovum inside you know what i mean it be yes. more simulated but it doesn't produce a proper ovum so if, if you want to choose i rather have my ovary that is being stimulated like the left one so that I can choose. It is actually written there one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. So out of one, two, three, four, five, six, I'll choose the best one, which is number two, maybe. Number one, yeah. which is yeah. very big. Yeah. Okay, and number six is the yeah. next one I will choose. But, but on the not right, good. yeah, on the right one, mm. I don't seem to be able to choose any of it. And this ovary that's being hyper stimulated actually can cause a lot of problems for the mother. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So hyperstimulation. This is from the fertility process. Yes. It feels like okay. Okay. Yes. So it's not desired, lah. No, it's okay. usually because of the medication that is being used to stimulate the the, the ovum, the ovary. All right. Okay. Uh, what are uh, what are the other risk of assisted reproductive technique in pregnancy after forty? Okay. Uh, the this other about ovarian hyperstimulation. Yes. The next yeah. one will be ectopic pregnancy. Atopic mm. because usually in assisted reproductive uh, technology, the embryo is not formed naturally. Mm. The embryo is being formed outside, and the, the embryo is then after that implanted back into in the in the uterus that is being prepared. So because yeah. this is not a natural, so this uh this wall of the uterus do not have a do not have a bonding with this mm. embryo. So normally yeah. when the baby is formed in the tube of the mother, okay, yeah. the baby form like a small ball and the small ball will, will move all the way from the tube and then come back to the uterus and then implanted in the side. But this mechanism is lost. So now this embryo has been formed and it's mm. being implanted into the, the wall of the uterus, which is being yeah. artificially yeah. prepared. This right. Right. chemical is not actually established. So this pregnancy, this embryo can still Mariah Raya. <laughs> Mariah Raya everywhere, <laughs> wandering around. Yes. Jalan, jalan. So he can he can he can stop wherever he wants. So okay. there's it's increased chance of uh, ectopic pregnancy if all this is being made artificial because this baby do not have a bonding with the with the house that's been prepared for, for him since the very beginning. The house being artificially prepared. And I also just move into the new place. So actually baby is not very keen. So it's it's Raya Raya and then it can stop anywhere. That's why it ended up in the ectopic pregnancy. Okay. Starting young. I try, I try I try to make it so that everybody can understand why this yeah. ectopic uh present. Yeah. yeah. Pre and so pre eclampsia. Pre eclampsia. Uh actually I have uh I have a video for the pre eclampsia later. Okay. Okay. Preeclampsia in this context is actually very uh, vague because, uh, like I said earlier, in the older mother, the vessel is already stiff. So most yeah. of the mother yeah. in the older age, they already have hypertension. Okay? Already have hypertension. And on top of that, because of the placenta issue in the older woman, there are more chances to get into a severe form of the hypertension, which is called preeclampsia. So maybe I can play the video later so that yeah. people can understand how pre okay. happened. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you want to play the video um, after we go through a few uh, of this? Yeah. After we go through a few of ah, these. Okay. So all right. All yeah. of the. 
this one. Okay, venous thromboembolism. Yeah, so this venous is a thromboembolism. Yeah. yeah, venous thromboembolism is basically blood clot in the blood vessels. Ah, okay. I see. Okay. So all this is, uh, okay, we all know that when you are older, everything becomes longer, isn't it? Yes. So the valve, the valve in your in your in your vessels also become longer. So usually yes. the valve in the in the vessels it help the blood to go in one direction only, which is going yes. from the feet coming to the heart. So when we are getting older, yes. okay, which can be evidenced by a lot of older women who spend a lot, they have got very yes. vein, isn't it? Yeah, uh, right. very cost vein. Yeah, so this is also one of the reasons why women at the older stage can get uh, venous thromboembolism easier yeah. because mm -hmm. this valve is lax. So for the see, blood see. to go against gravity to come to our heart, which is like 2 million kilometers away, you know, mm -hmm. if we are talking about blood, okay? Mm -hmm. So when this channel that is not going one direction, it, it pull back. When the I have a video also for this. Maybe when you look at the video, okay. it's easier. So when the okay. blood vessel itself is not as strong, that's why your blood is pulling easier at the at the lower part of your body. So it can call, it can form a venous thromboembolism easier because pregnancy itself mm. is a state that where your blood is supposed to clot easier. So oh. it make mother's life easier because if woman's blood it's normal like how a normal woman is when she delivered the baby, she will bleed to death. So God, so God makes the mother's blood clot easier so that when the mother goes through the process, the mother will not bleed to death because the mother is the blood of the mother can easily clot. So after the delivery of the baby, the blood clot is easier so that the mother will bleed to death. So with wow. all these factors together, that is why an older mother has higher risk of venous thromboembolism, but doesn't mean that a younger mother do not have this risk. Mm. Okay, it's just that woman that is pregnant has already very high risk of blood clot, but in a mother where the blood vessels is not as strong, she has an additional risk. If you get okay. what I mean. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's that's also there is something that occurs whether you are in an advanced age or not. Lah. Mm. Just come to pregnancy. Yeah, okay. All right. Yes. Uh, we spoke about genetic and chromosomal disorder, so we will just yeah. skip that. Uh, skip that structural anomalies also i think this one uh when you yes. spoke about yeah chromosomes uh, again mm. growth restriction what growth restriction this? yeah growth restriction is because when the mother is older right they, they, are, mm. they are tend to be more uh how do i say um malnourished because mm. oh. you are already your calcium level is lower your protein mm. level, is, uh, level is lower compared to a very active young woman yeah so when you have lower calcium you have lower protein you have in terms of diet perhaps you are more health conscious you may not yeah. take this yeah. you may not take that because of all this hypertension diabetes you know so yeah. you may actually selectively very selective with your food you don't mm. eat this you don't eat that more if you are a 20 year old woman you don't care you wear anything because you are young and you are healthy. But when you are 45, there are yeah. so many things that, uh, you know, I'm not taking this, I'm not taking that. So they are yeah. considered as a relatively more malnourished compared to a 20 yes. year old woman. So that's why, this is why this gross restriction coming, but not all mother more than 40 years of age, their baby is restricted. More, a lot of time yes. in Malaysia, our baby is bigger than it's supposed to be. Oh, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> Okay, and then of course there's always the, the risk of stillbirths and preterm labor, lah. Yes. Yeah. Preterm labor is mostly because of the underlying hypertension, diabetes. When the condition becomes well, not well controlled, or very difficult to control, you have to deliver the baby in order to able to manage the mother better. So the preterm labor is usually uh, doctor induced. Okay, it's caused by a doctor or the obstetrician based on the mother's condition. Stillbirth, we don't have an explanation why an older mother will have a higher risk of stillbirth. Perhaps with all this growth restriction and also structural anomaly, so the baby can die anytime without any any sign, you see. Okay, okay. Okay, uh, uh, doctor, apart from us, okay, we, we've spoken about all these risks and some of them do sound very worrying. Of course, let's say for someone who is in her 40s and she is considering pregnancy. So um, what can we say to uh, this group of mothers 
who are now like worried, you know, wow, so many risks. Is there anything oh. uh, like a silver lining that we can look at? Uh, the mother who is above 40 or you know 45 who planning to get pregnant it all depends on whether this is your first pregnancy or this yes. is your you know multiple babies like i mentioned earlier if this pregnancy you are conceiving uh this baby at the age after the age of 40 or 45 mm -hmm. you are conceiving naturally the chance of you to have a good outcome is actually much much better than the baby that you try to conceive with the technology so okay. i so forever that is a uh, you know, age more than 40 out there who wants to get pregnant, it all depends on whether this is your first baby or this is your number three, four, five babies. So if you are number three, four, five babies, of course, you still have to look for the risk of the chromosomal anomalies, structural anomalies. Yeah. But yeah. overall, your outcome is definitely better than the mother who is trying for the first time to get pregnant. Okay. And if the mother is trying to get pregnant for the first time and you conceive naturally, the outcome mm. is always better than the one that you try to conceive via uh, assistant productive technique. Okay. Yeah. Right. I understand that we've got a, a video now that we can yeah. watch this is to explain um, pre, -eclamp and pre eclampsia yes. and venous thromboembolism. Okay, come, let's take a look at that. Wait, so we can look for yeah. Okay. So this is a video which I download from uh, actually uh, YouTube. This mm -hmm. actually explain about why preeclampsia happens. So this is not just pertaining to older women. This is what we call uh, the pathophysiology of uh, preeclampsia. So let's take a look. So now we can see that when this preeclampsia occur, okay, mm -hmm. when placenta trying to implant or bury itself into the wall of the, of the womb, there's a lot of blood vessels, isn't it? So when yes. there's a lot of blood vessels, it depends on how is how receiving is the wall of the womb, which is your uterus, and how uh, how strong is the vessel trying to attach into the wall. So if you try to stick on something onto like you 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 have this double tape, right? You want to stick on yeah. your wall, yeah. and if your yes. wall is not good, it's not it's not the type that is very porous or it's very yeah. Uh, yeah. very smooth, and then mm. your double tape is not strong, it will not stick, mm. isn't it? So, so same thing yeah. goes to yeah. this. So if your vessel that is not able to bury into the wall of the womb, mm. that part of the connection is not good. I think the video is very lag, isn't it? Yeah, it's okay. Maybe we can just uh, fast forward it a little bit. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Okay, never mind. So I can. I think I can just explain. So okay. when this right. when this when this uh when this spiral artery that is trying to attach the wall is not being attached properly, it actually mm. leads a lot of a lot of chemical reaction. So all mm. this chemical reaction that happen at the junction between the placenta and also the wall of yeah. the uterus, yeah. Yeah. can release yeah. mediators like you know all these uh all these chemical cytokines, cluster glanding, and this mm. is the one that causes our blood vessels to be very thin our blood vessels to be not very elastic. So yeah. all this thin and not elastic causes this thing very stiff. When, when the vessel becomes very stiff, it becomes very hypoxic, isn't it? We all say that when you are getting older, your everything becomes very stiff. You mm. move a bit also difficult. Okay? Yeah. So that is that is why it is uh it causes hypertension because you want to you want to push this saying it a bit also cannot. So the resistance mm. is very high. So the resistance is very high, then it becomes very high, uh, high pressure. So that is okay. why it causes uh, hyperpressure. And the other thing is all this chemical that release, right? It actually acts upon the wall of our vessels. When the wall yeah. of our vessel become very leaky, then yeah. some water from this compartment can leak outside. So yeah. when this water inside leak outside, that is a problem. When it leaks outside, it brings together the blood vessels, uh, the, the blood cells, which is protein. It, the protein go outside of your blood vessels. When the yeah. blood vessels yeah. go outside of your blood vessels, okay, this protein collect water. So this water can collect in your leg, can in your, collect in your lung, can collect in your brain. So oh. those mothers have a very severe preeclampsia. You mm. usually will see the mother is very, very bloated. They get bloated in the not just in the lower part, they got bloated everywhere on the tummy, 
and also on the on the hand on the upper part of the body so those are the things that you can see but what about bloating in the brain when the bloating yes, in the brain, yes. which is edema, we call it edema, yes, it can yes. it can stimulate. That is why the mother with have severe preeclampsia can have seizure. Someone, it yes. can go someone. That is why yes. that is because the the thing is in the brain causes all this uh, 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 interaction, and also the vessels in the in the in the kidney. I told you it bring along the uh, water out, right? And the yeah. kidney yeah. become the wall of the kidney vessels has leaking of the protein. So the protein cannot be filtered back. It will drop into our urine. So our urine become very, very uh, concentrated with protein. So this yeah. is one of the indicators that we try to know how severe this patient is having preeclampsia. If the protein is a lot in the urine, meaning that the leakage is very, very, uh, very severe. So yeah. this woman yeah. is very, very likely to have leaking in the brain. So this woman will be having higher risk of epilepsy, asawan, seizures. Okay? So other thing is if your blood pressure, the other indicator for us to tell is if your blood pressure is more than 160 or diastolic, the one lower is 110, then you also very severe pre uh, preeclampsia. Okay. Anytime, anything in between 130, 140 is considered as, you know, we can, we can, we can handle it. But yeah. anything yeah. above 160, which is shown in the slide now, maybe this baby need, in, need to deliver because we need to help mother to control her blood pressure. A mother with very severe preeclampsia, when you deliver the baby, when the placenta is out, once the placenta is out, no more chemical reaction, isn't it? Yeah. So everything will go back to normal. So when a mother having a very severe preeclampsia, that is the time to deliver the mother. That's why I said there is a higher chance of preterm birth, isn't it? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So this what is what are we looking at now? So this is severe preeclampsia, like what I told you just now, is defined by solely more than 60, diastolic more than 110. The baby mm. is not getting enough pro, uh, nutrient from the from the placenta because the placenta yeah. bed is very yeah. tight. So when yes, it's very tight, yes. the transfer of the nutrient is not occurring very well. So the baby is mm. not getting the nutrient. Then the okay. kidney injury, like I told you just now, indicated by the protein, the more protein in the kidney, in the urine means the kidney is not able to filter. So meaning right. that this mother right. is having severe preeclampsia, persistent headache, edema in the brain. Okay? Signs and mm. symptoms of preeclampsia, number one, very high blood pressure, yeah. two, headache, three, Reflexes. This reflexes is something that your knee jerk, you know, your knee jerk. Mm -hmm. It's just because of the mediator in the blood. Number three right. is number four is your abdominal pain. The this is pain is due to uh, the other one is protein in the urine. Abdominal pain is because of the liver. The liver become very congested because got water. The liver has got a capsule which is stiff. So when there is water inside, it try to push it out. Your liver capsule is stretched. So liver capsule is much is not good it's, it's like a plastic that cannot cannot elastic it's not elastic so when you push 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 then the liver capsule is stretch 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 it becomes painful mm -hmm. so all this sign is telling me that okay this mother is very severe and i need to deliver so this is one of the indication where the babies has to deliver before 34 weeks preterm the, ah preterm yeah. so yeah. this is just a a, a very uh, general run off for us telling us how do women the eclampsia so I can see the video for the venous thromboembolism. Is it the same video or the other one? No, it's the other video that tells us why women uh, get blood clot. All right, yeah, let's take a look at the other video then. Uh, uh, Dr. Abi, it seems like we yeah. don't have um, enough time for a couple of questions. But okay, let's take a look at the video okay. first. Huh? Then we can wrap up. We can fast forward the video. Okay, the video just tell us that... Uh, why the blood clot formation? So, mm. okay, this is the two very uh, one of the very common uh, killer of mother in this in Malaysia. Oh, so you see, this is the vest. This is a vessel in the in the kaki in the leg where the yeah. blood is only going one direction. See, there is a valve there. So the valve yeah. is telling the blood to go into from left to right. Okay, mm. but when there is a bit of blood clot in the valve. So now mm. this is not functioning, isn't it? So you see, yeah. it doesn't close properly. 
So now, in some uh, chance, this small cloth that is can can be as thin as your hair, go back mm. to the see this cloth go back to the heart, and the heart will transfer the blood to the lung. So this as fine as your hair, punya blood cloth get dislodged. So when it dislodged, that's it. Your lung become ischemia, necrosis, and your lung cannot function. And this happened within minutes. See the lung, one part of the lung is already necrotic, meaning that the lung has got no blood supply. And this is only one, one small clot? Just one clot. small clot, okay? Because the, the vessels in the heart is very, very small. It's very, very yeah. small. That's why we can breathe properly and the oxygen, carbon dioxide can, can exchange. Yeah. So with a very, very small clot in the lung, it can actually damage the lung and you cannot breathe. So this yeah. can happen within minutes and the mother can collapse. That's why venous thromboembolism is still number one killer among pregnant mother, other than, you know, medical condition like heart attack, yeah, uh, yeah. hypertension. So venous thromboembolism worldwide, still number one killer for mother. How can we avoid that from happening? Okay, so, how, so, so we have go through all these problems that can occur to mother, isn't it? So now yeah. everybody yeah. tell me I shouldn't be pregnant, isn't it? Yeah, it sure sounds like it. <laughs> yeah, I'm more than 40s and after I've mm -hmm. talked about Nobody wants to get pregnant now. So population, Malaysian's population will drop down to 50%. Uh, yeah. mm. Isn't it? So no. So this video, this, this presentation is, is to tell you, yes, there is a lot of problem that could occur, that could happen to a mother who is above the age, considered old. But I have to tell you that with all this technology, all this, you know, good antenatal follow-up, good obstetricians follow-up, your pregnancy outcome is actually as good as those who are 25 years old. Wow. Mother who is 40, mother who is 40 years old, they are wiser, isn't it? They have gained a lot of experience in life. They have a nice career. So all these mother above 40 years old, they are usually very well to do in terms of career. So they know a lot of things like, you know, when I tell you this and then I understand, I'll go back when I, and then I'll, I'll pay attention to it. Compared yeah. to those who are, 15 years old, got pregnant, you say, come to see me so that I can help you. Oh, no, because I'm very young. I am very... Okay, so compared to this 15 years old and a 40 years old, actually the 40 years old outcome is much, much better than the 15 years old. Because yeah. 40 years old women, they are more responsible. They are, yes. they are yeah. more wise. So when you tell them, they understand and they come for the follow-up, they know how to take care of themselves. All these problems that I have mentioned, it's not without treatment. It's always with the treatment. So with all this treatment, your pregnancy outcome is as good as those who are 20 years old. Yeah. So we, the, the presentation for today is actually to tell you, yes, if you are 40 years old and above, this is your first baby, you need to watch yeah. out for this. Yeah. Or this is your number five baby, you need to watch out for that. Okay? okay. Good technology, with good follow-up, your outcome is as good. Okay. So I'm not trying to scare, I'm not trying to scare all of you who is trying to conceive for the first time after the age of 40. Yeah. Yeah. Or don't claim to have your number six, number seven, number eight baby. Go ahead yeah. and have it. But make sure you follow up with your obstetrician because they can okay. tell you what to look for and what to do when you have such complication. Okay. All right. that, that's very uh, reassuring. Thank you so much. Yeah. For those of you who are uh, in your 40s and you would like to conceive, uh, it's not actually you can go and see Dr. Abi Ling uh, at <laughs> Columbia. Yeah, and monitor your yes. pregnancy. Yeah. Okay, yes. uh, Dr. Abi, I understand that we've got uh, um, okay the, the complications that we spoke of and then also your recommendations. Maybe we can just quickly go through that. Mm. Recommendation, I think it should be the. Uh, yeah, like for example, if you've got uh, gestational diabetes, so mm -hmm. what yeah, I think, to... yeah, so if because, uh, one thing that is very uh, we need to bear in mind is when we are older, we have a lot of problems, we have diabetes, maybe when we are yeah. 40 years old, we have hypertension. So, all these yes. things, when you want to embark on your pregnancy, either this is your first or this is your you know, seven or eight, you need to make sure that your medical condition is well controlled. So, if let's yeah. say you hypertension but you have already got one eye blind or one mm. kidney gone i do not encourage you to embark on your fifth pregnancy sixth pregnancy because this pregnancy itself can cause this condition worsen 
So if you are in your 40s, you know, 45, and this is not your first pregnancy, yeah. perhaps your underlying medical condition is not well controlled, thinking yeah. about another pregnancy, you really need to sit down and talk to your obstetrician and also your medical doctor who is managing your medical problem. Say that, look, is, am, I, am I fit to have another pregnancy? If your medical doctor said, yeah, go ahead, your hypertension is well controlled, why not? Mm -hmm. So this is very important. Number so it's, two. It's good idea to actually, uh, actually check with your doctor first like, whether your body is able yes. to take on pregnancy or not. Okay. Yes. Right. Yeah, whether this is your first or this is your many pregnancy, I think it's very wise. That's why I say uh, older women are always wiser. They, are, they know yes. themselves. They want a good and healthy pregnancy. So this is what you should do. Yeah. So okay. the other, yeah, the other things, uh, the condition that is always associated is uh, gestational diabetes, which is mean, which means that you are, you do not have diabetes, but you have diabetes when you are pregnant. This pregnancy itself is very sugary, so when you are pregnant, you are more prone to have diabetes during pregnancy. But a lot of time, these women of uh, advanced advanced age, which is forty and above, that yeah. actually have diabetes, but they didn't know. They only realized that when they first came to booking and the blood check, oh, you are diabetes. So actually, a lot of time is, you know, late diagnosis. When you are not pregnant, nobody take care of you. You only take care of yourself. And how many of us actually went and take blood annually yes. and yes. actually went and check whether we have diabetes annually? So most of the time, yeah. it's so right. health screening is very important every year. Yeah. So hypertensive disorder, if you have hypertension, there are medication to help you to prevent or to delay onset of preeclampsia. So you can start taking aspirin. Like I said, if you are planning to get pregnant, speak to your doctor and the doctor needs to speak to the obstetrician so that we can start the treatment early so that can delay the onset of a preeclampsia. Okay? So okay. all these are uh, all these uh, other problems like you know antipartum hemorrhage, which I mentioned earlier, and also placenta that is very low because the placenta in the older womb may be associated with uh, uh, the wound that the placenta is not going higher up. It's always blocking at the, at the exit of the baby, which is the birth canal. So all yeah. this, with the good ultrasound, 3D ultrasound, you can actually map the uterus. So for yeah. placenta previa, yeah. you map the uterus, you deliver by CN section. The outcome is as good. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. So the lesson there is, that is mm, yeah. always go to your follow-up. So do not miss yeah. your follow-up. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, doctor, we're going to take one question now because yeah. we're uh, running out of time. It's such a shame because this is such an interesting uh, topic. Um, Mr. Barjesh Paul is asking if there is any chance of a child born with Down syndrome in case of late pregnancy. I think we covered this already. Yeah. So maybe we'll do yeah. this. Okay. Uh, yeah. There's another question here by Ms. Chan Lee Hong. Hi, doctor. Is it risky undergoing amniocentesis tests, can this test be replaced with others such as blood tests or scanning? This is okay. have to do with uh, uh, pregnancy, you would know better. Yeah, so this amniocentesis test, actually, like I said, with the advance of technology, you don't really have to go through amniocentesis where you stick a needle into your tummy and go and mm -hmm. aspirate the fluid around the baby out. So all this amniocentesis, we call it like a very invasive, like you have to stick a needle in, you know, the needle can injure the mother, can injure the baby. And after they take out the, the needle, the, the area that is being poked through, there is a uh, risk of infection. So there are other things we call blood tests. You can always use non-invasive pre prenatal diagnosis, NIPT. I think in uh, Colombia, Asia, we have this test. You can undertake this test at the age when the baby is about 11 to 13 weeks. You take the mother's blood to draw the mother's blood out. And from the mother's blood, you try to isolate the baby cell because um, yeah. baby and the mother share the blood, isn't it? Like I said, the placenta, yeah. the mother's yeah. blood and the baby's blood. So yeah. some of the baby's yeah. cells actually went into the mother's circulation. So when mm. you took the mother's blood out with all this technology, they separate the baby cell out and use the baby cell to actually uh, to actually study for chromosomal anomalies. So this is called NICC or NIPT test. This is non-invasive. It's like mother taking blood for, for glucose. So these are the tests that nowadays we do it without going through amniocentesis. Okay, so this is very safe. Okay. okay, so scanning, you cannot scan all the structural anomaly, only the very obvious one. Yes, the baby yeah. with cleft palate, baby with heart problem, baby with uh, less one finger, maybe you can find out. But something like a 
the lung has got problem, a little bit of problem, we cannot scan through it and it cannot be tested via the blood test. Even amniosynthesis, you can't do that. Okay, all right. I hope that is that uh, the question, Ms. Chan, and it's a very good explanation. Um, okay, we've come to the end of the program. So thank you so much, Dr. Abi. Is there any, no any words or you know, a few words of uh, advice before we uh, wrap the show up? Okay, uh, at the end of the lecture, I just hope everybody do not get scared. You want to get pregnant? If you are responsible and you are smart, you 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 can listen to your obstetricians. Just go ahead. Okay. You know the risk. You know how to tackle it. Just go ahead and get pregnant. But of course, you have to listen to your medical doctor and also your obstetrician. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, that was uh, the consultant of nutrition and gynecologist from Columbia Asia Hospital in Tulu, Dr. Abi okay. Ling Ting. All right. Thank you so I much, hope, everyone. Yeah, you I hope here. everybody enjoy and um, oh, yeah, just let me you, know Dr. if I can help anymore. Yeah. All right. Fantastic. Thank you. you can always go and see Dr. Abi in the. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, bye, everyone. Thanks again. Bye.